One of the most fun parts about game development is making your own levels. Luckily, Unity has an amazing tool for quickly creating and prototyping 3D levels called ProBuilder. So in this video, we'll have a look at how to use ProBuilder to create your own levels. I'm going to be making an FPS level inspired by one of my all-time favorite Counter-Strike maps. See if you can guess which one. Also, this video is sponsored by Unity. Also, the results of the community game jam are in. A huge congratulations to Beck and White for winning overall and to all of the category winners. You guys really did an amazing job on all of the games. If you're a winner, please visit the Brackies Discord on information on how to collect prizes. Also, special thanks to Infinity PBR for his support on Patreon. And just a quick reminder that we will be rebroadcasting the Unity keynote tomorrow, the 23rd. Here's the time when the event will start if you don't want to miss out on all the exciting announcements. So without further ado, let's make a level. So first of all, you want to make sure that you're using Unity 2019.2.3 or later. And ProBuilder is a package. So to install it, we need to go Window, Package Manager. Here you want to select All Packages and search for ProBuilder. Simply select it and hit Install if it isn't already. You can also update it here. I'm using version 4.0.5, so anything later than that should be just fine. And I'm actually also going to install another package here called ProGrids. So ProGrids is a package that works really well together with ProBuilder because it ensures that everything we do snaps in place in order to stay on a grid. I really recommend working with the two tools together. So simply select it, hit install or update, and I'm using version 3.0.3. .3. And with that set up, we are ready to open ProBuilder. So let's go Tools. ProBuilder, ProBuilder window, and this is going to open up a window with a bunch of icons. You can always right click and switch to text mode if you find that easier. However, I'm going to be working with icons. You can also go window and change from a floating window to a dockable window if you want to place it inside the editor like this. However, I'm going to be using it as a floating window because it allows me to maximize my scene view and still have it here. And now we're ready to start creating the base of our level. So to do this, we want to create a new cube. We could of course just hit the new shape tool here and that's going to create a cube for us. However, we can also hold down Alt and press and this is going to allow us to change a few settings. Here we can choose the type of shape. I'm just going to leave this as cube for now, as well as some dimensions. So I want my level to be 40 on the X. Let's make it one unit tall. And one of the really cool things about ProBuilder is that if our level is symmetrical, we can just build one side of it and then have ProBuilder mirror everything to the other side. This is perfect for this map here because as you can see, it's completely symmetrical. So for our length here, let's make it half of what we want. I'm just going to set mine to 55, which if we mirror it to the other side, you can imagine makes out a pretty good length for our level. Now let's hit build and we've now created our first ProBuilder object that we can start editing. However, I think this material here, the default material looks pretty dull. So I'm just gonna go ahead and create another material for this. Let's go to project, hit create, material, and let's just call it default. And we can just click and drag this to apply it to our cube. Of course, nothing currently happens, but if we go ahead and make this a bit brighter, we can see that we've now applied it. We can also go in here and add a texture. You can of course choose any texture here, but I'm going to use one that comes with ProBuilder called Gridbox. I find it's really nice to work with when prototyping. In order to select it because it's inside of a package, we need to unhide textures by disabling this button right here. And we can simply search for Gridbox and it's this one called Gridbox Default. And as you can see, this creates these nice grid lines on our material, which I really like. And to save ourselves from having to drag this onto every object that we create, let's just make it the default texture for ProBuilder. So to do this, we'll go Edit, Preferences, make sure to select ProBuilder, scroll down to Mess Settings, and here we can simply drag in our material. So at this point, it's time to start modeling. And as we talked about, it's best to do this on a grid. So let's just go Tools, ProGrids, and open up the ProGrids window as well. So if we go ahead and select our cube right here, you can see that our selection mode is currently set to object. So we select entire objects at a time. The second one is called vertex, where we can select individual vertices or corners. You also have edge, which allows us of course to select edges. And of course, face, where we can select entire faces of an object. So the first thing that we need to do here is create some walls surrounding the level. To do this, we need some extra geometry. We can really easily insert geometry by selecting an edge like this one here. 
and hitting the insert edge loop button. If we press this, we can see that we create a loop of edges that go all the way around our object. And I'm just gonna take this and move it all the way over here to create a one unit wide wall. We can also select an edge that goes in the other direction, insert an edge loop, and you can see that we've now created a perpendicular edge loop. So I'm gonna place this one all the way over here and do the same thing again for our right wall. There we go. I'm not gonna create a wall over here since this is where we're going to be mirroring to the other side and we don't want a wall to run through our level. By the way, if you accidentally deselect an edge loop, you don't have to go all the way around like this. You can simply double click the loop and it's going to select everything. So now we can switch into face mode and select all the faces where we want to place walls. We then hit extrude to create our walls and move them up. Another shortcut for this is simply holding down shift and moving. This is a really handy one. So now we've created the ground and walls for our level and we're ready to make the pool itself. Now to do this we need to add some more geometry to create the pool from. Remember when using Pro Builder you can also create new shapes and combine them to make your level and we'll definitely do that later. However here we're going to make the base in one piece since it's a bit more optimized and it makes it super fast to mirror. So stay with me here even though it might be a bit hard to wrap your head around. So I'm going to change to the edge selection mode here and select this edge right here and we're going to insert some edge loops. So let's press the button, let's move this over, and another one. I'm also going to select this one and create one in the opposite direction, and here I'm gonna leave a bit more space. Then we can change to face selection, and I'm gonna select the face in the center here. Now with this selected, we can hit extrude. I'm gonna change to the scale tool and move everything in a bit so we can see what's happening. So we now have this upper face here. And I want to make sure that the walls of the pool itself are also one unit wide. To do this, let's change to edges and simply snap these into place one unit from the sides. Then we can select the face once more, put this back on ground level. And now we're going to select this, hold down shift and select the bottom face. And let's hold down shift in order to extrude the entire pool area down. Now this creates a really nice pool in here, but there's a bunch of extra faces here that we really don't need. Remember, we're going to be mirroring this thing, so these faces here won't be visible at all. So to fix this, let's simply go ahead and select one and hit backspace to remove it. And I'm just gonna go through and do this for all of them. I'm gonna do the same thing with the top face right here. And as you can see, we have two edges here that we just need to align. So let's simply snap these back in place. And if we go to the other side, we can see that there's a face still here. So let's simply select that and remove it as well. And so now we've opened up our pool and made it ready to mirror. Again, this is a lot of geometry work and you can get as complicated with this as you want. This is the super proper way to do it, but as long as it works for you, I just recommend having fun with this tool. So now we've created the base of our level and we're ready to mirror it to the other side. So to do that, let's change into object mode and let's hit the mirror button right here but let's remember to hold down Alt so that we can also choose a few settings. First of all, we need to make sure that duplicate is set to yes in order to make a duplicate of the object and not just flip it. And we also need to choose the right axis to mirror on. As you can see up here, we wanna mirror on the Z axis. So I'm just gonna hit Z and hit mirror. And there we go. It now actually starts to look like a level. Let's also create some quick placeholder water. So let's hold down Alt and hit the new shape tool. Let's change the shape to plane. I'm gonna set my width to 24 and my length to something like 74. And if we move this in place, and this is the really cool thing is that we can move this while generating, that should somewhat fill up the entire pool. Yep, that looks good. And if we move this up a tiny bit, so it's just one unit from the ground, that is perfect. Let's go ahead and hit build and close the shape tool here. And we now have an object for water. Of course, it currently looks really, really boring. So let's go ahead and create a quick material for this. Let's hit create material water. Let's drag this onto our water plane and let's just change the color here to a quick bright blue. Awesome. So next up, we're ready to start adding the walls and platforms at the ends of our level. To do this, we're again going to create a new shape. So let's hold down Alt and click. Let's change back to a cube. And let's make this something like 22 units wide by eight units tall and two units on the Z. Let's hit built and drag this up and place it at the center of our level here. I'm just gonna leave a bit of space so that players can walk across as well. Of course, this is currently just a very boring wall type object. So let's go ahead and add a platform up here that players can use to peek over. 
To do this, again, I'm going to use the exact same technique. I'm simply going to select an edge, insert a few edge loops. You can also just press Alt U. Select the face right here and hold down Shift to extrude it upwards. And we now have a platform. Really, really easy. Also, we of course also need to cut a hole in this wall so that players can sneak through. And again, we do this the exact same way. So we switch to edge selection mode and I'm going to add two vertical edge loops as well as one horizontal one. I'm then going to select the face right here and we're going to extrude this face. So I'm going to hold down shift, but instead of extruding it outwards like this, we're going to move it two units in which is the width of our wall. And as you can see, this right away cuts a hole in the wall. Of course, there's currently a face blocking it here, so we can't see through, but to change that, we simply hit backspace to remove the face. There's also a face on the other side that we need to get rid of. So again, just backspace to remove it. And we can now walk through the wall. Awesome. Next up, let's create a simple ramp that leads up from the water. To do this, let's again, create a new shape. Hold down Alt, let's select cube, and let's make it four by four by six, something like that. Let's switch to object mode here and move it over to see if it fits and see if it touches the ground. It does not, so let's make it a tiny bit taller. Let's see if five units are better. Perfect. Now let's hit build. And of course, this is not really a ramp yet. This is just a cube. So to fix this, we can use the vertex selection mode. And here we're going to select the top and bottom left vertices. And we just need to merge these together. This is called collapsing vertices. And the button we use is this one. As you can see, it snaps them right together and we'll do the same thing for the right side. We can then select this edge right here and move it down. And we have a ramp, it's that easy. Of course, on the other side here, we need some stairs that lead up to the platform. So again, let's create a new shape. And there's actually a type of shape called stair that simply generates good looking stairs. So let's go to object mode. Let's rotate this over. I'm holding down control to make sure I snap in place. Let's place it somewhere around here. Let's have the width be actually three and seven and seven. Let's also move it up so that it stands on the ground. And we can play around with the amount of steps here. I'm just gonna leave mine at 12. So let's hit build and I'm gonna move it over a tiny bit. And I actually wanna go ahead and extend the end here. So that's a tiny bit of space for the player to stand on. So let's select the face right here and simply move it over. And that's just what we need. We then take this entire object and duplicate it by pressing Control D and then simply rotate it around and place it on the other side. Awesome. So that's pretty much it for this entire part of the level. Now we just need to go ahead and mirror it to the other side. And I think the best way to do this is simply combine all the objects that we've created so far and mirror them together. So let's remove the mirrored object right here. And inside of the hierarchy, we can now select, first of all, our base here. Let's actually just call it level base. And here you want to make sure that the base of your level is currently centered on zero, zero, zero. So I'm just going to hit reset on this. I'm then going to just select all the objects and move them over. There we go. And we can now select the level base. And here you want to take note of where the pivot is. In my case, it's in the bottom right corner, as you can see here. If your pivot is just placed in the center of the object, you need to make sure that you've selected pivot up here. The reason why this is important is because when mirroring objects, it's based around the pivot. And sometimes when we merge objects, which we're going to do now, so let's select all the objects that we have except for the water. And inside of Pro Builder, let's hit Merge Objects. You can see that the pivot shifts. Now, this is not a problem since because we've centered our entire level, we can simply hit the Freeze Transform button, which is going to reset the pivot to the center, which is right here. Awesome. So now that everything is merged, we can go ahead and mirror our level. And there you go. That's pretty much all we need to do for our base level. Now we can just scatter around a few obstacles. And to do that, let's go ahead and add a new object here. Let's create a cube. Let's make it two by four by seven. Let's hit build. So this is going to be a bit of cover that we can line up to the wall here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and use the extrusion tool to model this out. There we go. Now we can just place this around our scene. I'm gonna hit control D to duplicate and flip it around. And once we are happy with that, we can select all of them duplicate and move them to the other side. And I'm just going to flip these as well. So inside of the inspector here, I'm going to select the scale to minus one and just move them right in place. 
And that's pretty much all we need to do for our level. At this point, we're ready to pop in a first person controller. Of course, we just need to make sure that all of our objects have colliders. By default, they should have a mesh collider applied. However, when merging objects, this might disappear. So let's just select our two merged objects. Let's hit add component and let's select a mesh collider. And that's all we need to do. We can now pop in a first person player. I've gone ahead and created a very simple and quick one right here. This is of course available as a download together with the rest of the project and of course this level. So let's just disable our main camera here and let's go into the game view and maximize and let's try and play. And as you can see, we can definitely move around. We can go upstairs, we can jump over obstacles and the entire level is indeed working. So really, really cool. That's pretty much it for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next one. And from here, it's up to you to start making your own levels. If you want to learn more about Pro Builder, we'll of course have a link for that in the description. On that, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Thanks to all of the awesome Patreon supporters who donated in September. And a special thanks to Andrew Kalininko, Art Armin, True VR Systems, Simmer IO, Alexander Blair, Cheetah 3D, Jeff Johnson, Infinity PBR, Cyborg Mummy, Dennis Sullivan, Chris, Sheriff Abdullah, Fizzle Marify, Fang Su Long, Leo Lasset, Clinton Van Skewer, Swears D, Derek Heemskirk, Ronan, Tim of Holderbach, Bruins Cat, Naoki Uwasaki, Gregory Pierce, Larry Tweed, James Rogers, Rob Farron, Pakum Bernier, Erasmus, Robert Bund, Cor Jackson, James P, Anthony Patton, Kyo Swedeski, and Abrisi. You guys rock.